واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعلنا من الفائزين وأن يجعلنا من أصحاب الجنة ويقول الرسول الحبيب صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه كل أمتي يدخلون الجنة إلا من أبى قيل ومن يأبى يا رسول الله قال من أعطاني دخل الجنة ومن عصاني فقد أبى أو كما قضى الرسول الحبيب صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For all prayers, all credit, all thanks due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, our sustainer, our savior in the day of judgment. May Allah save us that day. I be a witness that does not to God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. And I be a witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is the last and the final messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mankind and to jinn kind. And whoever choose to obey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow his teachings will be guided. And he will attain success in this life and the hereafter. May Allah give us that success. And whoever choose to disobey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and disregard his teachings will be misguided. And he will be among the losers in the day of judgment. May Allah protect us from that. For a Muslim living by Allah's orders, by Allah's commands, and by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sunnah is the only thing which will save you. That you have to know that. You cannot know Allah more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot love Allah more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot worship Allah more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the one Allah choose and give this religion. So for you to be a Muslim, practicing Muslim, a true Muslim, a believer, you have to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He puts it step by step, inch by inch. You have to. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept you and reward you for your good actions, may Allah accept us. May Allah make us among the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So today, inshallah, our topic will be about something which is so easy, we neglect it. It's more beneficial for a Muslim to do that act. We took it as a matter of joke. We don't do it. While it's one of the best secrets, one of the best deeds for a Muslim to be connected to his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for Allah to love you back. For Allah to give you the good life you want in this life. And to give you the good life you want in the next life. Little, easy, simple. But it's more efficacious, more effective, more precious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While we Muslims, we don't take advantage of it. That is the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within you inwardly. As a Muslim taking a few minutes in your day, 24 hours, to say this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing else. We all know when you love something so bad, everyone you see, everywhere you are, you will mention it. Example, you want a beautiful car. Anyone you see from your friend, you say, oh, this car is like that, this like that. The same thing, if you want a woman, you will mention her every time to your family members for them to help you out. Anything you want, you will work hard for it. You will mention it every time, every time. We will proclaim love in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I want you, brother, to sit and take a pen and pencil, calculate how many minutes in your 24 hours Truly, you give those means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not your prayers, because most of us, half of the prayer is express. The other half is thinking about what we left behind and what we're going to do. That is our prayer. Allahu Akbar, the imam shouldn't make it longer. This imam read too much long things. 
this salat is too long rushing out we're coming in with the intention to go out in five minutes we count the minutes of our salat most of us we're talking precious time you as a muslim you take in your daily you say this is only between me and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the reasons of all our rituals all of our worship is to remember allah Allah said, Even this Friday prayer, Even when you finish worship in Allah, your rituals, Allah said, Remember me. Because it's easy for you to forget Allah. Why? Shaitan is there. And the only weapon a Muslim or any human being have against evil shaitan is to remember Allah, Zikrullah. Because you cannot catch him, you cannot hold him, you cannot beat him up, you cannot yell at him. Most of us, we curse shaitan, we are not allowed to curse him. Allah didn't say, Il'amu shaitan, never. He didn't say that. He asked us not to obey him, not to follow him. That's what he asked us. And he asked us to remember him. To say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim to against shaitan so in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ta'ala said ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu dhkuru allah dhikran kathira wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila huwa alladhi yusalli alaykum wa malaikata liyukhrijakum minal dhulumati ila al-nur wa kana allah wa kana allah bil mu'minin rahima wa kana bil mu'minin rahima in another one he mentioned the good people, men and women. In Ahazab, when he said, Innal Muslimina wal Muslimat wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minat wal Qahitina wal Qahitina To the end, he said, Wadhaakirin Allah kathiran wadhaakirat A'adda Allahu lahum ma'ufira wa ajran azeena In another ayah, in Baqarah, he said, Fadhkuruni adhkurukum wa shkuruni wa la takfuru if we go through these ayats, we will see what we need in this life, what we need for the hereafter. All rely in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go to the first ayah in Baqarah. He said, Oh believers, remember me. I'm your Lord, remember me. In return, I will remember you. If Allah remember us, where our problems will go, nothing will be. How our life will be, will be the best paper. How our life will be easier and simplified. But right now we are in a grave situation as Muslims. The turmoil around the world, I will say 90% is on the Muslims. The difficulties around the world, 90% is on Muslims. The hardship which is going through around the world, 90% is on Muslims. We should ask ourselves why? Because we cut our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us if we remember him, he will remember us. So ask yourself, how many times do you remember Allah in a day? Not your five prayers. I'm not talking about that. That is for you. Privately. Because Allah says if you remember him, he will remember you. And he will never broke his promise. To the point in the hadith, but you see what he said. Ana inda zanni abdi bi. Fa in zakarani fi nafsihi, zakartuhu fi nafsi. Wa in zakarani fi mala'in, zakartuhu fi mala'in khayrin minu. Allah said, you as a Muslim, his relationship to you is at the level you have expected him to be for you. I am for my slave to where he expect me to be for him. Imagine that. If you love Allah, you accept that Allah love you back, you will be high in remembering Allah. Allah say, if my slave remember me inwardly, privately, take his time to sit and remember Allah, this time, these few minutes, 10, 20, 30, one hour, it's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for this world, not for nobody. My heart is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah said, if you do that, He, the Almighty, will remember you in His that. If you remember Him in a congregation, you off work, came out of out of work, you, hey, you remember there's a lecture on the masjid. There's a remembrance of a way. Let me go, instead of going sitting and watching TV, let me go to the masjid. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read one page of Quran. Ask one question of Islam. Rectify my Iman. Allah says, if you do that, He will remember you in a great, great assembly. That is the Malaik. Now, most of us, we want Allah to be with us. We want Allah to support us. But we, we don't sit and say, Allah, this is time for with you. Because most of us, if you check the time, we look at our phone, Wallahi, most of us will say, three hours is the least. Your TV, your internet, you will find one hour is the least. If you ask how many times you sat by yourself thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's one of the best, easiest act of deed Allah gave us in this Islam. Remembering Allah with our tongues, our hearts. To the point the Prophet tell us, the difference between us and the dead is remembering Allah. مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّدِ مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّدِ if you want to see the example of the dead and the living, see the example of the person who remember Allah and the person who doesn't remember Allah. Now we know if they say you're dead, that means you have no benefit. To the point that's what our ulama, our pious scholars, they say your heart as a Muslim to remember in Allah is the need between the water and the fish. No matter how big the fish are, no matter how big it, no matter how small, if you take it out of the water, what will happen to it? Dead. That's the example of your heart with remembering Allah. The moment you stop remembering Allah, the moment you minimize or you decrease your time to remember Allah, that's the moment your heart is going to die. You will be breathing, you will be eating, but your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you coordinate. You become tiny. Now we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet told us that Allah looks where? Not our bodies, not our too much saying and doing, not our knowledge. He looks to our hearts. The hearts. For you as a Muslim, for your heart to live, you have to remember Allah. Because it's the only thing Allah said, if you do it, I will give you peace of mind. Because today, we're not lack of luxury. Wallahi, we have luxury more than our parents. We have the best life more than our parents. Easy life, we have it. Because me, I know some of my parents or my grandparents, they don't have beds, they have mats on the ground. They don't have cars, they don't have money. But they have something which we all don't have today. They have peace of mind and content. The little they have, they thank Allah and Allah bless them with it. We today, you will see we have money. Most of us have money, have luxury, have cars, have homes, have buildings. But we have worries 24 hours. We don't sleep good, we don't eat good, we don't breathe good. Everywhere we are, we're tired. Thinking about 20 years. Why do we have all the luxuries of life? Why? Because our hearts have no peace. No tranquility. And Allah said in the Quran, Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul quloob. Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul quloob. For you as a believer, if you want tranquility, peace of mind, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the only one who will give you that. The only one who will take your worries out. Who will make you content with what you have. 
Because that is our problem. We don't have no qana'ah, no itmi'inan in our hearts. Wallahi, otherwise, if someone have your buildings, you have two, three, four buildings, you have your homes, you have your car, you have fun, you have to live a good life. But today we are not. To the point we have worries, if you hear a broader, broader complaint, you will ask, Wallahi, where's the Iman? Because we cut our tie to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He take it out of our minds. As a Muslim, you have to take care of your heart. You have to feed it. The way you feed this stomach and this body, your heart, you have to feed it. And the, the life and the food of your heart is zikrullah ta'ala, remembering Allah with your tongue, thinking about Allah with your mind. Putting your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only when you are in a trouble, not only when you have calamity, when you are in agony, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all the time. That's what Allah said. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, udhukurullaha dhikran kathiran wa sabbi'u bukratan wa asila. Oh, you believe? Remember Allah abundantly. He didn't say little, abundantly. And glorify Allah, sanctify Him, subhanallah wa bihamdi. Say it as much as you can, brothers. Every time, everywhere. Allah says, say it morning and evening. If you do that, He will bless you. His angels will pray for you. He will take you from darkness to light. In this life and the hereafter. All by remembering, subhanallah. If you remember Him, that is a sign you love Him. And if you remember him, he will forgive you your sins. He will take care of you the day you cannot do nothing for yourself. Because we all know. Walillahi al a'la. Example, your family member, say your kids, say your wife. The one who will tell you every day I love you. Every day I love you. How are you? How are you doing? If that, that person did mistake, when he come back, it's easy to forgive. But the one who will never say to you, I love you, never remember you. All doing bad things. When they come back, ask them, oh, this is usual. That's what you used to do. Allah has the most perfect example. When we remember him, Allah, he will remember us. The day we have no power. Because that day will come, brother. You have to believe it. A day will come for you as a human being where you have no friends. No family members, no money, no power, no saying power. Your tongue itself won't talk. A day will come for you, for me and for every human being. When your mouth cannot defend you, your hands cannot defend you, all against you. That day you will need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remembering him right now when you leave, taking your time, giving him a minute in your time, in your daily life, he will remember you that day. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَا عَمِلَ بْنُ عَادَمَ عَمَلًا أَنْجَى لَهُ مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ A human being cannot perform an act, cannot do a deed, which will save him the most from hellfire, don't remember in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now ask yourself, how many times you remember Allah a day. A day. <coughs> Ask yourself simple questions. Not how many times you pray expressly. Not how many times you rush, you came in and out from the masjid. How many times you sat down as a Muslim, a believer in Allah. Say, Allah, this is for you. Because our Prophet and the companions, they used to do it. They were more busier than us. Because they have to go and defend the Islam. They have to go and spread this Islam. They have to go and prevent our, our enemies to attack them. We, we don't have that. Most of them, when they pray the Fajr, they will sit till the sun rise. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most of them, if they go, they walk whole day, they will stand half of the night. Or third of it. We, alhamdulillah, we have everything easy, everything, eight hours of work, that's it. You're free. 
You have two hours of driving. You don't even mistakenly remember Allah. You put rubbish things to listen. Imagine that. Two hours you wasting it on a train or in a car. While you have the opportunity to go to Jannah. With that, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to know, not because you breathe in, you are alive as a Muslim. As a Muslim, if your heart is alive with Allah, you are alive. When your heart is disconnected with Allah, even if you breathe, even if you are healthier than all the planet, you are dead as a Muslim. Now ask yourself, are your heart alive or dead? Because if it's dead, revive it before you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وأقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى. يا رب لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك. وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على النبي الأمي محمد وآله وأزواجه كما صليت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. فيا إخوة الإسلام والإيمان أكثروا من الصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى في هذا اليوم العظيم فإن الله وملائكته يصلون عليه ويقول الرسول الحبيب صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه إن من أفضل أيامكم يوم الجمعة فأكثروا فيه من الصلاة علي فإن صلاتكم معروضة علي ويقول أيضا من صلى عليه صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we talking about remembering Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Now the blessings of remembering Allah, the scholars, they put it to hundred and some benefits. Ibn Qayyim has a, a little book, it's not a big book. الصيب الواب, I think. About 100 benefits from the Quran and the Sunnah about remembering Allah with your tongue. 100. Imagine that. We will take only five, inshallah. The time is too short. One of them is that when you remember Allah, Allah will remember you. That when you need Allah, He will be there for you. That's what He said. Second of it, when you do it, Allah will make your life easier, your heart more peaceful. You will have tranquility, peace of mind. If you want that, brothers, it's worth more than billions of dollars, peace of mind. That Allah will make peace and content in your life. That what he bless you with, even if it's little, he will make you happy about with it. Make your family blessed if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you remember Allah, you will be ahead of the all believers. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Sabaq al-Mufarridun. Qalu wa man mufarriduna ya Rasulallah. Qala al-Dhaakirun Allah kathiran wa al-Dhaakirat. One day he walking with his companions near a big mountain, Jamdan. He said, you people have to know that the people who are mufarridun ahead of everyone. They thought that is the people who are ahead of the folk. They say, no, no. The Prophet said, Mufarridun is the people who remember Allah all the time, constantly, abundantly. Men and women, everywhere they are, they think about Allah. They will say his name. They will glorify him. Those people are the people who are ahead in the day of judgment. And when you remember Allah, Allah will make it easier for you, for your ending to be good. When you remember Allah, Allah will give you the VIP status in the day of judgment. That means the agony of Qiyamah, because we have millions of years, brothers, to go and stand in Qiyamah and wait for judgment. It's a hard million years, more than millions. And we remember, we know that the hadith where the Prophet has seven people, category of people, Allah will shed them that day. They won't see the heat, they won't see the agony, they won't see the fear. One of them, Rajulun Zakar Allah Khadi and Fafadu Ta'ina. A man who's, or a woman who's to sit by himself, thinking about Allah, remembering Allah, reading the Quran of Allah, till he wept. He cried out of fear of Allah, remembering Allah, how his situation with this day, what he's doing for Allah. 
You remember that? He cried. Allah said that person will get the VIP status in the day of judgment. May Allah give us that status. And we know again, when you remember Allah in the day of judgment, we have a scale. Your good word, Allah will make it to a building. Your good little action, Allah will give it a body and a tongue. One day you will go and find your one dollar equal to a mountain, tons. You will find a good work which you do for something here in this dunya, not for Allah, bigger in the eyes of people. You will find it like a fly in the day of judgment. May Allah protect us. So the Prophet ﷺ told us, as a Muslim, you have Allah give you a gift. Kalimatan khafifatan ala lisan. Thaqilatan fil mizan. Habibatan ila rahman. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanallah al Imagine. Is there anyone who cannot say Subhanallah wa bihamdi? No. Is there anyone who cannot say Subhanallah al -Azim? No. It won't take you a second. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al -Azim. Know the meaning. The Prophet said two words. They are easy to say in your tongue. Every Muslim can say Subhanallah wa bihamdi. And Allah loved them so much. And in the day of judgment, they will be heavier. They will make heavier than tons of tons, mountains of, is heavier on your scale. Saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al -Azim. You're driving, say it instead of listening to news, 1010 10 news or music. You clean your home, say it instead of talking rubbish. Sitting 10 hours watching TV or internet, say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, <coughs> Subhanallah, al -Azim. You're doing yourself good deed. You're giving yourself the Jannah. You're giving connection between you and Allah. Allah will know that you love Him, that's why you're remembering Him. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. That means you're proclaiming the, the purity, the sanctity, the glory of Allah, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. That means Allah is perfect in all ways, all actions, all means, subhanallah. Wa bihamdi, then you glorify and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know the meaning and say them as much as you can. Because one day someone come to the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasulullah, the Sharia is too much for me now. Every day do this, don't do that. What I should say? He said, La yazalu lisanu karatiban bimikrillah. If you cannot do everything, do your best. That means your tongue will be wet and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today you will see a Muslim brother will stand even at the masjid. Some people in the masjid arguing about politics for one hour. In the masjid, not outside. As we say, Assalamu alaikum, so most of us now, Assalamu alaikum, we don't say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah to the tree. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. If a Muslim know the benefit of this two hour, two minute words, Wallahi, you won't even talk to nobody, touch your phone before you say them. The Prophet said, if you say Subhanallah, Man Sabbah Allah, Thalathan wa Thalathin, Wa Hamid Allah, Thalathan wa Thalathin, Wa Kabbar Allah, Thalathan wa Thalathin, Dubra Kulli Salatin, Wa Qala Tamam al Mi'a La Ilaha Illa Allah Wahdahu La Shalika Lah, Lahu Al Mulk, Walahu Alhamdulillah, Wafirat Lahu, Imagine that. The Prophet said, after every mandatory prayer, if you sit, take your time. Not sub, 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 sub. Because most of us, some of us, you will see the tongue and the face this side, the hand this side. Yes. Not that. You say, Subhanallah. 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 And you say, Alhamdulillah. 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 Allahu Akbar. Sub, 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 it's not zikr, it's not name, it's not Arabic word. Sub, sub, sub. Then most of us, you see the fingers are faster than even the eyelashes, the blinks. Sub, 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 sub. That is not a zikr, brother, you're wasting your time. The Prophet say, if you say Subhanallah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times, 
and you complete it with La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. The Prophet said, Allah will forgive you all the sins between you and Allah at that time. Imagine that. One minute, you will finish saying it. You say it properly. Not you saying sub sub, you look in the phone that way. Sub sub, and you're talking to other person. Sub sub, you do, you're looking at something else. Say it proper. It's easy. And some of us will come to the masjid. It's not blaming nobody. You will take them sitting, saying zikrs, some type of names which Allah didn't give no proof of it. Just a shaykh tell them to say it. While the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, there is no good in this life which will lead you to Allah, to Jannah, which he didn't teach us. That means anything you want in this life, brothers and sisters, anything you want in the next life, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has it in his sunnah. And it's the easiest. I compare it to most of the zip which our people do, Muslims do. Because I came from a family who was that. They sit for hours making zikr, Allah, Allah, ya huwa, huwa. Those type of zikr. Hours. While if you compare it to sunnah, Allah, you will find all the hours become zero. The sunnah, one minute you get better than what they say, hundred years. The Prophet says, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Hundred times. If you fast, maybe two minutes. Or three minutes, maximum four. If you say it hundred day, hundred times a day, Allah will forgive you your sins. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku lahu alhamdu ala kulli shayin qadir. Ten times only, Allah will give you the reward of someone who freed the slaves, four of them from the families of the Ismail alayhi salam. Imagine that. Hundred times that day, shaitan don't have business with you, you don't have business with shaitan. How that how? You don't have to have wudu. You don't have to be in the mosque. You don't have to face the Qibla. You don't have to be anything. Working where you know you don't need your mouth. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. La ilaha illallah. Driving. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. La ilaha illallah. Staying on your couch. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah al It's easy brothers. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. Wallahi, we want it. Every day we have, if you listen to some du'as which we Muslims make, Wallahi, you will cry just to listen to the du'a. Why is not answering? Because we pick a time to talk to Allah, not all the time. We make Allah as a bait. That means when we are in agony, we remember Allah. When we are at ease, we don't know Him. And the Prophet said, Ta'arraf ala Allah fi rakha Remember Allah when you at ease, when you're comfortable, you're happy. Allah will remember you when you need Him. Wallahi, we need Allah. Let's connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will connect with us. Allah says, وَمَنْ عَارَدَ أَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِشَةً ذَلْكَ Whoever reject and turn away from remembering me, his life will be so hard so in bad shape that he won't imagine it. You as a Muslim, if you want Allah to give you a better life, remember him. Peace of mind, remember Allah. To save yourself in the grave, remember Allah. To have a IP status in the Akhirah, remember Allah. To go to Jannah, remember Allah. May Allah remember us. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان والذكر اللهم حببني إلى حبب إلينا الإيمان والذكر وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأزل الشرك والمشركين اللهم احفظنا واحفظ إخواننا المستلافين في جميع أنحاء العالم يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم واحفظهم وانزل عليهم سكينتك يا رب 
رب العالمين اللهم ردهم إلى أوطانهم سالمين وغالمين يا رب العالمين اللهم أتعمهم من جوء وآمنهم من خوف يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لنا واغفر لجميع موت المسلمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم ووسع مدخلهم وأكرم نزلهم وأدخلهم فسيها جناتك يا رب العالمين اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا رب العالمين اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت صلاة وقد قامت صلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله صلوا سبحانه وتعالى الله استغفر الله لست جابس الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله 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 أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أنهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر 
كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم الله سمع الله لمن حمده السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Brother في سبيل الله Brothers and sisters في سبيل الله في المسجد Remember the house of Allah Allah will take care of you inshallah في سبيل الله Invest for yourself and for your loved one Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mashallah, I would like to thank Imam. May Allah increase his knowledge and may Allah forget our sin and expect, expect our, our prayer, inshallah. Do not forget your masjid, inshallah, still. Masjid, need your help. Keep the masjid, inshallah, Allah will give you back. Support your masjid, inshallah, brothers and sisters. Also, you have a bread, take bread home to your family, inshallah, bread is for you. And uh, also, don't forget the hope of that Imam give to us, all of us, uh, the members of Allah, inshallah. Peace be with brothers and sisters. Peace be with you.